Good evening, Facebook, YouTube Lives. We've got all kinds of lives watching us right now. So we are going to talk about this really crazy Alabama night of weather we've got. We are going to end up in a situation tonight where we are tracking both the risk of strong to severe thunderstorms and the risk of snow in the same state at the same time. Now, a couple of caveats to this whole thing. We do not anticipate accumulating snow in our part of Alabama. So first and foremost, that's, that's that. We do not anticipate a significant widespread severe weather event for our part of Alabama. That said, this is going to still be a very impactful run of weather for us, so we're going to dive into the details of all of this. So, uh, with no further ado, I am your pal Josh Johnson. We are chatting my favorite topic, Alabama weather. And boy, is it a busy one tonight. So we're watching a couple of different things happening at the same time. First and foremost, right now, we're watching thunderstorms. You see them here. Getting going now. One storm of interest, by the way, forming back here over central Louisiana. This is going to be one of these nights where we could have storms form and just sort of move across the same spot and cycle up and down and uh, produce a tornado or two along the way. Let's go hour by hour through the night ahead. So watch with me here. This is the latest run of the high-res rapid refresh model. You see it here. So what happens? Well, watch and be amazed, or at the very least, watch and be mildly entertained. So I think 10 o'clock is when the window opens for the risk of some severe weather. A couple of things we'll be watching at 10. The main cluster of storms will still be back here in central, in west central and southwest Alabama, likely along and west of Interstate 65. Again, this is at 10 o'clock tonight. So um, that's what we're watching at that point, would be this whole thing back off to our southwest for the city of Montgomery. So let's go forward an hour. Now you'll notice a couple of different things happen. The main line runs from Elmore, Atauga, Montgomery, back down 65. A couple of cores within this could be strong enough to produce damaging wind gusts and perhaps a brief tornado. Farther south you go, the higher the tornado risk. You get up into central Alabama up here, the atmosphere is really stable, kind of cool, a little too cool for widespread tornado threat. Midnight gets here, okay, so the main line goes east of 65. Isolated cells ahead of the main line out here over the wire grass around 10, 11 midnight would need to be watched. So I'll back this up. See them here. This is at 11 o'clock. These are what I'm talking about. So you've got two situations happening here at 11. You've got the main line of storms back to the west. Then you've got uh, this cluster of thunderstorms down over the wire grass that would bear some watching as well. Fast forward. Here's 1 a.m. Storm still ongoing from around Opelika to Geneva. This stuff back here is all what we call post-frontal or anafrontal precipitation. It means it's not going to produce tornadoes. So at this point, the tornado threat will be confined to that section of the state. Okay, so what do, what do we think is going to happen and where? Let's take this full so it's you can uh, make out all of it here. A couple of different things that will sort of take place here. Um, see the area outlined in yellow? That's where we anticipate a very low risk. Basically, we can't rule it out. We don't expect it per se, but we can't rule out isolated spots of problems with damaging wind gusts and perhaps a brief tornado. Uh, this is not a tornado outbreak kind of setup. This is the kind of thing where you could have one or two, the best chance of which will come over South Alabama. So that's that whole part of this. That's the area outlined in orange. Now, as far as the timing is concerned, uh, we'll say, if you draw a line with me, Montgomery to Andalusia, west of that line, we'll call it 10 to midnight, east of that line, midnight to 2. So it's really this kind of a three or a four to five hour window here. Cut it right in half, west and east. So if you live west of Montgomery, it's 10 to midnight. If you live in Montgomery and points east, uh, it is midnight to 2 or 3 in the morning. The overall risk level here, again, is on the very low side. So next thing we need to talk about. Um, you need to have multiple reliable ways of getting weather warnings. Know ahead of time where you'll go if a tornado warning is issued. Uh, meteorologist Nick Gunner will be here all night. I'll be on call uh, to come in if we're having problems with any of this. Next thing we got to talk about, and you might like this topic, snow. Woo! Yeah, wouldn't it be cool if it snowed? I always cheer for snow. Um, snow's my favorite kind of weather. 
I'll say up front, I don't think it snows and sticks in a big part of Alabama, in, in our part of Alabama. I think they're going to get a, a really significant winter storm north of Birmingham, which we'll get into that in a moment here with the maps uh, here. But um, we'll walk you through this kind of just hour by hour and moment by moment, so to speak. But there is a, there's a chance that you see some snowflakes fly as far south as maybe Montgomery. I think it's a long shot, but the risk is there. Then there's another risk, a more substantial risk of a bigger snow north of us. So let's talk about it. Let's walk you through it. Here's the maps. This is the high-res rapid refresh. I've zoomed it in on Alabama. So you'll notice here come the storms we've talked about. Now, by 11 o'clock tonight, it's snowing heavily. Places like Florence, um, getting down towards Coleman, Huntsville, Muscle Shoals, Russellville. Uh, northwest Alabama is getting hit pretty hard with some moderate snow. Here's midnight. The rain is now changing to snow at Chattanooga, Fort Payne, Mentone, Skyline, Boaz, Scottsboro, down towards Aniana. And then would you look at this? Here's one in the morning. How about that? It's now snowing at Meridian, Philadelphia, Mississippi, close to Tuscaloosa, uh, Sullivan, Fayette, Aniana, Jasper. Birmingham, perhaps. So when you're looking at this map, a couple of things. The purple that you see is a brief period of sleet. So it goes from rain, maybe sleet in the middle, briefly. But I think this really goes probably from rain to snow pretty quick. Okay, next hour. 2 o'clock in the morning. Rain snow line kind of stalls a little bit, but it makes it down into parts of Bibb County. Snowing now, or at least a mixture of snow. Gadsden, back up towards Cedar Bluff. Piedmont, Jacksonville, Odenville, Asheville. Birmingham, Hoover, uh, and then back to the south. Then the rain mixes with a little snow. Look at this. Marengo County, Perry County, Coosa County, maybe even in the Lowndes, and Montgomery and Otago and Elmore. will be a close call for a little wintry mix on the very tail end of it. It's not an accumulating snow um, for most of our area. So a couple of points I've got to make. One is this, and if you listen to anything I say, I want it to be this. So, I have paid attention and tracked storms like these literally my entire life. Professionally for 20 years now, that's hard to say, it's weird. I hadn't, I hadn't said that out loud, I guess. Um, but my, really, ever since I was a teenager. Whenever there's a storm system this deep, this dynamic, there's usually some surprise somewhere. Someone gets something they don't expect. What's the surprise here? If we knew, and it wouldn't be a surprise. It would just be something we expect to happen. So what's the surprise? Well, the surprise to me could be, see this over here in East Central Alabama? Okay, so you click this. This is pretty, pretty decent rain that's falling here at this hour. Three in the morning, up around Alex City. Upper air sounding. Big warm layer. Lots of cold air underneath it. Cold air really close there. You're really close to that being some snow. Chambers County, 4 in the morning. Warm layer beginning to erode a bit, 37 over 32. That is really close to being some snow. So what's one thing I'm going to be watching overnight tonight? See all this rain down here along the I-85 corridor from Montgomery up towards the state line. Is this something that, is it rain? Or does it turn wintry? Is that the surprise? I can't say that we expect it, but I can say, hmm, something worth watching. Some of the other data, a little more bullish with that idea. Let me show you this. This is the latest run of the, run of the three kilometer NAM. Historically, it performs pretty well in these situations. See what it does. This is four in the morning, and it actually. That back edge of rain, it actually shows a little more sleet and snow mixing in all the way down into Otaga, Elmore, Coosa, Tallapoosa. Again, this is one model. Your mileage can vary considerably. Okay, southeast Alabama, Dothan area, uh, risk of severe weather late tonight between midnight and 3, no snow for you. Then it turns really cold. Uh, what can we expect in Marbury? We've already talked about Marbury and all that, but... Um, Low end risk of damaging wind with storms coming through. I'll call it mm, for you 10 a to one or 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. So late tonight, main risk damaging wind for Marbury. Can't rule out some snowflakes 
or sleet pellets dropping from the sky early tomorrow. Okay, let's do this. It's the European computer model. Kind of the same thing. It tries really hard to catch up, and it paints a little more of a wintry scenario down here into parts of, uh, of the state north and west of Montgomery. Okay, so I went hour by hour, but I know we have people coming in and out all the time. Shane asked, when is this supposed to hit? The thunderstorm threat west of Montgomery is around 9 p.m. to midnight. East of Montgomery, it's midnight to 3 a.m. The overall risk level is in the very low range for most of us. The concerns will be a brief tornado and damaging wind gust. Then the rain may mix with or change over to snow. We'll say along and north of a line from about Demopolis to Billingsley, to Rockford, up into Tallapoosa County. So you could see, could see some snowflakes flying. I doubt the ground turns white, but you could probably see some flakes flying. Marengo, Perry, northern Dallas, northern Otago, Chilton, Coosa, Tallapoosa, Chambers. And then I think this ends up being a fairly substantial snow event up here in the parts of northeast Alabama. Check this out. I'll show you the, the mapping on this. This is just, again, just one model but you end up with some pretty nice snow totals. Let me go back over to the herd. It will have, in my opinion, probably the best stab at this. I think the higher peaks up here in northeast Alabama, you could end up with three, four, five, six inches of snow. And by the way, this ends up being a really big deal for our neighbors to the north. Check this out. This is up in Kentucky and Tennessee. How about a Gatlinburg special? See that 10 inch on the map right there? right over Gatlinburg. Whew, won't, won't that be something? Get up there in a cabin, watch it snow. Yeah, buddy. Sign me up. So that's the deal. Uh, how about Valley Grand? Agnes, thunderstorms move through 10p to 1 in the morning. Main risk for use damaging wind. I can't roll out a tornado, but I think the odds in Valley Grand are very low. Cold air rushes into the state. The rain could mix with or change over to a brief period of light sleet or light snow very early Saturday morning before ending. I don't anticipate travel problems or accumulations in Valley Grand, but it's something we'll be watching. Brenda asks, is this tonight? I thought it was coming tomorrow night. No, it's very cold tomorrow night. Uh, the storms and the threat of severe weather and the very tiny chance of a few flurries is tonight. The bitterly cold is tomorrow. Shane asked, what about a tog old Kingston? Everything I said about Marbury applies there, too. So if we get into repeating, I'll, I'll end up repeating myself for five hours if we go down that road. Casey, everything I said for a Tauga applies to Elmore as well. Everything we just said. So again, let me just re-rack this whole thing from the top. Risk of severe weather tonight in the area outlined in yellow. See it? If you don't know where you are on this map, then you have a problem. Um, and you, you've got to figure out how to know where you are on this map. Because I can't, the, the amount of help I can give you is limited until you have that knowledge. Knowledge is power, right? So, risk of severe weather tonight for everyone except Marengo, Perry, Chilton, Coosa. Everyone else in our area, there's some risk of severe weather tonight. Uh, damaging wind, isolated tornadoes. West of I-65, that threat should be around 9 o'clock until midnight. That would include places like Prattville, Mil or Prattville, Clanton, Marion, Selma, Camden, Linden, Demopolis, Orville, Sardis, Monroeville, Evergreen. 9 p.m. to midnight, low risk to very low risk of damaging wind and isolated tornadoes. East of there, so Montgomery, Wetumpka, Rockford, Dadeville, Auburn, Opelika, Beauregard, Tuskegee, Shorter, Union Springs, Troy, Brundage, Laverne, Andalusia, Op, Elba, Ozark, Dothan, Geneva, Eufaula, uh, Phoenix City, Lafayette. About midnight to 3 in the morning. Very low risk for you. Damaging wind, isolated tornadoes, the main concerns. Far south Alabama, same thing. The risk is a little higher. So that's the story. For Demopolis, I think most of this stays south of you, Wendy. Um, I can't say no, no, but probably not. Gary Leeds, Josh, North Georgia. Two to four inches of snow. Tell me about it. Uh, my my soul and heart will be up in Blue Ridge and McKaysville and Gatlinburg and all those places tonight. Man, I wish I was going to be there. That is going to be really, really cool for them. And uh, I will be a little jealous. So there you go. All right. Uh, any more questions, thoughts, ideas? I will 
also point out, by the way, National Weather Service, see the counties outlined in pink there, they've upgraded a, to a winter storm warning over the northern quarter of the state, so north of Birmingham. So this would be places like Gadsden, Scottsboro, Mentone, Fort Payne, Valley Head, Skyline, Huntsville, uh, Madison, Decatur, Russellville, Muscle Shoals, Red Bay, Moulton. Winter storm warning on March 12th. That seems familiar. It's because it happened on, 19, in, on March 12th, 1993, too. Jonathan asks about the wind chill tomorrow, upper 20s, low 30s. Lori asks, is this a PDS situation? No, it is not. Uh, in fact, I think it's the opposite of that. It, it, it's a low-end risk. It's a low risk. Now, low risk doesn't mean no risk. Um, if I told you to gather up nine of your best friends, so it's a party of ten, you're going to eat at a restaurant, and I said, there is a low risk, about 1 in 10, of you are going to get food poisoning. So someone in our crowd, our party of 10, that we're going out to eat, all of us are going out to eat. There's 10 of us, me, you, some friends. And if I told you ahead of time, one of us is going to get food poisoning tonight. That's a low risk. It's only 10%. But it's something you'd pay attention to, right? I would. Same thing here. Same exact concept here. Now, the, the risk of severe weather in our area is probably lower than 10%. It's probably 1% or 2%. But if I told you that a restaurant had served 100 people that day and one of them got food poisoning, you would, again, you'd pay attention, right? That's all we're asking. Just pay attention. Um, have multiple reliable ways of getting weather warnings that are capable of waking you up. You do that, you're going to be fine. This is not a PDS. This isn't some huge deal. This is just something to pay attention to. Janice, isn't it too cold for tornadoes in Troy? Probably so, yes. Uh, it's really close to being too cold for that. And that's, quite frankly, the, the biggest reason that we don't have as big of a concern in Troy as we do farther south, because it, it's really, the air is a little too cool, a little too stable in that part of the world. So that's exactly right. Good question. I have friends that just got into Gatlinburg, Ronald. Are you jealous? I am. Your thoughts on travel late tomorrow evening in Birmingham? Pro probably fine. It will depend on what happens. Um, I doubt they get a ton of accumulation in Birmingham. But again, I, I'm not a road expert. I don't know a lot about how ice sticks on roads, and there's places that are in the shade and places that aren't. And there's some of you that, no offense, some of y'all can't drive in the rain, much less any snow on the ground. Then there's some of y'all that are from Wisconsin, and an inch of snow, you can drive right through it. So there's no simple answer to travel questions. Those are much more complicated. I miss it about Wetumpka. Okay, Autumn, uh, storms come through late tonight. We'll call it 11P to 2A. Main concern, damaging wind. I can't rule out a tornado, but the odds are very low there. Very low. What about tornadoes in Dothan? The risk is low, but not zero. The timing will be 11P to 3A. Michael, all of this will be through Alabama by sunrise tomorrow. The risk of storms ends around 3. Then we are done with the risk of any wintry weather by 5 or 6, most likely. What about the weather in Dothan tomorrow? Now we're into the whatabouts. Makes my heart sad. What about tornadoes in Dothan? What about Dothan? Um, I, I think we've pretty well answered all this, so we won't get too deep into that, but... The overall idea, Autumn says stuck at work, didn't get here on time. Hey, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Um, my man, Son Sonny Gunnels. Hey, Sonny, how are you? Sonny coached me in Little League football, maybe Little League baseball, too. And he always expected me to do good, even if I didn't. He expected me to do it. And that kind of belief means a lot. It means a lot to me now, and I'm a grown man. So, Coach, good to see you. Um... Sonny, I call her Coach Gunnels. Well, I don't know what to call you now. Coach Gunnels, I think that the ground probably turns white in Jacksonville. Half inch. It's not going to snow a ton, but I think it, the ground could turn white in spots. John Cap says, hey, from Slap Out. Hey, John, how are you? Some, by the way, Sonny, the person we're talking about, Coach Gunnels, uh, was a Little League coach. He coached baseball. He coached football. He was also like a really big deal in the world of boxing. Like coached some pretty big boxers. Uh, was a really kind of well-known boxing referee too. 
from Jacksonville, Alabama. I'm telling you, there are really tremendous, amazing people scattered all around us that you never even know about. That's what we ought to do on TV sometime. We ought to do a special about just the really cool people we have hanging out in our backyards that we don't even know they're there. So, Sonny, always good to see you, my man. Even if it's not in person, it's always good to see a, a familiar name and a familiar face. He says, it's Hall and, my Hall of Fame in boxing, April 23rd, Gadsden. That's pretty cool. That is way cool. There you go. 04 Olympic boxing team. He, Sonny's feeding me in the comments. He's giving me some tips or giving me some intel about kind of his, uh, his cool accomplishments. Echo Olive asking about ops. Storms come through 11P to 3A. Some of those could produce isolated pockets of wind damage. I can't rule out a tornado. Overall risk is in the low end of the spectrum, but it's there. So there you go. All right, I've got WSFA 12 News at 6 coming up momentarily. Now, a couple of notes here. Uh, meteorologist Nick Gunner is coming in tonight at 8.30. He's going to work an 8.30 until whenever shift. So he will. he's going to be here overnight watching these storms. He will jump on TV if we see a problem. If I see a problem, I'm coming back to work. So we've got you covered, I promise. Uh, Nick is our new weekend meteorologist. We hired him a few months ago. If you haven't seen him yet on TV, he's tremendous. He is a smart, smart guy, talented meteorologist, knows his stuff inside and out. So um, you are in good hands, believe you me. Um, and I'll be here too, ready to rock. So that's the update. Again, I'll leave you with the map here. There it is. That, this map, by the way, and others like it, available at WSFA.com. Just click on the weather option. And uh, everybody in the comments, go back and find Sonny Gunnels talking about in the Hall of Fame. Comment and tell him congratulations. I know we're all proud of him. I am, and I know you are too. Pretty sweet to have, have somebody like that that we know. That's awesome. Okay, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful evening, a wonderful weekend. God bless each and every one of you, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Watch Facebook page for updates, and uh, if you're near a TV, we've got WSFA 12 News at 6 coming on in about seven minutes as of this recording. Now, some of you watching this after the fact, um, but you can go to uh, WSFA.com and get updates as well. All right, everybody. Hope you all have a wonderful afternoon.